Rising safety concerns the FBI on alert. The local area is now getting extra security. Plus, why gators across Florida are acting very unusual next. It's time to play America's favorite jackpot game. This is Powerball. Good evening, America. I'm Michelle Isles. Tonight, we've got another life-changing jackpot for you in an estimated amount of $116 million. Get your tickets out. We'll start things off tonight with the number 39. Right after that, America, we have 12. Let's congratulate Francisco Nunez of North Carolina, who won $150,000. Now your next number up tonight is 16. That's followed by 52, and we're rounded out tonight with 33. Now for your winning Powerball number, good luck everyone. It is one, and your power play multiplier is two. Let's take another look at those winning numbers. Live from ClickOrlando.com and WKMG, we're getting results in your neighborhood now at 11 p.m. We won't be afraid, we won't shy away, we won't back down, and we are proud to celebrate our heritage. Local Jewish communities prepare for Passover with the backing of the FBI, the warning from federal law enforcement. Plus, opening statements in a key witness, Donald Trump's historic hush money trial is underway. We'll tell you what happened inside and outside the courtroom. Also ahead, a key source of funding keeping your child's school from crumbling, set to expire. Why the newest push to keep it going needs your vote. And the Orlando Magic in desperate need of a turnaround now after falling game two to the Cavs. Biggest plays and the biggest lessons. Live in Cleveland got to dig themselves out of a hole. First, though, breaking news. The FDLE has issued a missing child alert. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Matt Austin. And I'm Ginger Gadsden. They are looking for two-year-old Rowan Renault from Edgewater. He is believed to be with 29-year-old Robert Renault. They're traveling in a white 2004 Chevy Cavalier with no hubcaps and may be headed to Florida's west coast. If you see the child or this car, call 911. New at 11, now the FBI is on alert. The agency is concerned a lone wolf could target Jews at Passover celebrations. Law enforcement and local Jewish institutions are heeding the warning. New 6's Treasure Roberts went to a Passover Seder tonight in Seminole County. All right, Treasure joins us now live in studio, and we know the Anti-Defamation League recorded some 8,000 anti-Semitic incidents in last year. So what did that conclude? Yeah, Matt Ginger, that includes harassment, vandalism, and assault. And the organization actually recorded the highest number since they started tracking anti-Semitic uh, incidents in 1979. And I do want to say, by the way, the Passover, the holiday is not over until April 30th. Okay, trending in yeah. the wrong direction, though. All right, yeah. uh, thank you very much. Well, meantime, an anti-Israel encampment, many of them, in fact, have been popping up on several college campuses ahead of Passover. Today, Columbia University in New York City switched to remote learning as protests on campus entered their sixth day. Demonstrators are calling for a ceasefire in Gaza and demanding the universities divest from companies connected to Israel. Some Jewish students say many of these chants at these rallies are anti-Semitic and they're concerned about their safety. Similar protests have been taking place at other college campuses, including NYU, MIT, and Yale. The prosecution and defense made opening statements, and the first witness took the stand in former President Donald Trump's historic hush money trial. It's happening in New York. Jared Hill has the latest from inside and outside the courthouse. And, of course, we will be following this historic case from gavel to gavel. Make sure you have the News 6 app and alerts turned on so you can get the alert and the latest updates from our web team. The app is free in your app store. Just search WKMG. Uh, today was the last day to register to vote in next month's District 5 special election in Orlando. So to get you up to speed, the seven candidates on the sample ballot you see on your screen right now are running to fill the seat left vacant when longtime District Representative Regina Hill was suspended earlier this month. Hill is tied up in litigation now linked to accusations she took money from an elderly woman and bought expensive things for herself. Governor Ron DeSantis removed her from her seat pending the outcome of the investigation. Hill says she's innocent. 
A quick look at some key dates for this election. May 9th is the last day to request a vote by mail ballot. This deadline is just for District 5 special election. Early voting in the special election begins Monday, May 13th, exactly three weeks from today. It runs until Sunday, May 19th. Then, special election day is Tuesday, May 21st. Whoever wins will hold that seat until Hill's criminal case is resolved or until the current term ends. Tomorrow, school leaders in Orange County will decide whether the halfpenny sales tax should go before voters again in November. Since 2002, the initiative has generated more than $4 billion. That money has funded the renovation or replacement of more than 130 schools and the construction of 65 new ones. The half-cent sales tax is expected to expire this year, though. If leaders approve a resolution tomorrow, it will be up to voters in November to decide whether it continues. Tomorrow's meeting starts at 9 in the morning. On well, tonight, game two of the playoff series between the Magic and Cavaliers in Cleveland, and all we can hope is the Magic get a spark when they come home to Orlando. Yeah, there's no place like home, right? News 6 was at a watch party earlier tonight at Wall Street Plaza in downtown Orlando where fans watched as the Cavs took a commanding 2-0 to zero lead in this series. Sports director Jamie Say is in Cleveland tonight. Jamie, you are at the game, of course. What do the Magic need to do to win in this series? Well, I think the answer is pretty simple. They have to make shots. This is a make or miss league. If you're missing shots, you're not going to win a basketball game. Cleveland made more shots than the Magic did tonight. Matt and Ginger, game two was a lot like game one. Uh, the Magic fell behind from the get-go once again, trailing by 12 after the first quarter. And I can tell you the Magic were dejected after this game, understandably so, as they fall behind 0-2. You're going to hear the Magic's thoughts on Game 2 coming up a little bit later in sports. Live in Cleveland, I'm Jamie Say, getting results news 6. Matt and Ginger, back to you. All right, they're in a hole. Uh, We're coming home, make some magic happen. It's just never a good sign when you, all the good highlights are from the other team. Or, or your ball's <laughs> bouncing out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, the Magic do have a reason to celebrate tonight, though. The city has approved plans for the team's new downtown entertainment complex ahead, what you can expect of the eight and a half acres of land next to the Kia Center, and what it will cost taxpayers. Tom. See all this orange on the satellite shot tonight? That's the dry air that's changing your weather. I'll be back to pinpoint just how long we'll stay dry and what it means to your temperatures. Also ahead, Gator versus an MMA fighter. Find out why Gators across the state are acting so peculiar. You're watching News 6 at 11. Live on a Monday night, we're getting results for Leesburg, Wilbur-by-the-Sea, and all of Central Florida. This portion of the news is sponsored by Rubenstein Law. People are struggling. It's hard. You guys have been so incredible. Oh, what is happening? <laughs> We're packing up our newscast and taking it on the road. Oh, that's happening now? Now, so let's go. Every month, we're broadcasting live from a different community. Because we want to speak with you, hear about the things that concern you most. It's time you create the roadmap for our newscast. See what I did there? WKMG hits the road live. Want us to come to your neighborhood? Go to clickorlando.com slash hits the road and tell us where to go next. Live with Matt Austin, Ginger Gadsden, weather with Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells, sports with Sports Director Jamie Say, and special reports from the investigators. You're watching WKMG, getting results at 11 p.m. The plan to build a giant magic entertainment complex next to the Kia Center is a step closer to reality tonight. Today, Orlando city leaders voted to approve the plan. They also threw in $42.5 million in taxpayer money to seal the deal. It'll be built on 8.5 acres of land on South Huey. It's where the old OPD headquarters used to be. The 900,000 square foot complex will have a 3,500 seat live entertainment venue, 273 unit apartment complex, and a 261 room hotel, along with shopping, dining, and office space. The complex is expected to open in March of 2027. I think this development has the opportunity to really kind of energize 
downtown and more specifically the Church Street corridor. This is going to be such a game changer in so many ways. Uh, not only is it going to incentivize our businesses, but there's a lot of empty offices, spaces that are that need to be filled, and I think that's also going to bring people back to downtown. Such a massive mm. complex. Well, it is that time of year again. Gator mating season. And they're looking for love right now, Ginger. And they certainly are. And that means they are out and about and can be pretty aggressive. In Collier County, a man drove up to a gator, dragging his neighbor by the leg. The victim begged the driver to please run over the gator. He did, and it released the guy. Absolutely would not let go. He was dragging him into the uh, pond. Alarming is what I would say. Gator was, the man was taken to the hospital, but is expected to be okay. FWC removed the gator from the pond. So the gator's dragging a guy? By the leg. By the leg. Back to the pond. You're not going to see that one in California, no. are you? In Tampa, <laughs> this gator became enamored with the tires of a plane at McDill oh, Air Force fella. Base. FWC moved it and dropped it in the Hillsborough River so it can find a proper mate and not snuggle up with the tires yeah, of the plane. Yeah, that's dangerous, That's not going to end well. No. And talk about looking for love in all the wrong places. This gator in Jacksonville caused a traffic jam, and you can see why. MMA fighter and, according to his social media, licensed gator trapper, Mike Drogic, jumped in to help. He's better known as the blue-collar brawler. It didn't take him very long to get that eight-foot gator under control. Yeah, so, he, I mean, he was at a hockey game. So at first and, glance, I thought he was shirtless, only in shorts. But he's got the sleeves ripped off. That would have like, completed the Florida Man <laughs> Ensemble. Larry the Cable Guy, he's, it's, it's close. But he knew what he was doing, wow. you know? Then he just lifts that thing up. I mean, and no Did one he? got hurt. No one got hurt. And apparently I'm last year... I'm not going to tell him otherwise. No, last year he um, took a 10-foot gator from an elementary school. So he's been out there, like, saving lives of people all this time. And we never heard about it. I didn't know. I Dude's just it. laughing. Having a great time. And then I, went back wow. to the hockey game, no shoes, after he was done. <coughs> hey, Chief just Meteorologist Tom Sorrells joining us now. It was a beautiful day today. It was. Can we get another one tomorrow? I think we can. We great. get a bunch of them in a row for you now. Take a look at live weather radar tonight. No radar echoes. All the rain, little spritzes of rain we had up this morning. Those are gone. Even the front pushed down to the south and dragged away all the lightning. We had big storms from, say, Miami all the way to the Bahamas tonight earlier. Much of that activity is shut her down, getting far enough away that I can't pick it up on radar locking. They're falling apart. High pressure building in on the backside of the low. We will come back to that in a few more minutes. Just know right now, water vapor loop looks great. You see the big swath of orange and rust color air. At 30,000 feet, that is really, really dry air. Not all of it mixing down to the surface, but it will. It's going to be so dry in the coming few days, it's going to feel, well, exhilarating and fantastic again tomorrow. Overnight low this morning was 62. That's normal. The daytime high was only 77. That's way, way below the normal. Normally, we go to 85. We did not even approach that today. Currently in downtown Orlando, in the light Orlando, delivering Hope Cam at 63 degrees and just as clear as it can be. 70% relative humidity feels great. Camera went out at the port earlier today, so it locked on that shot. Launch credit union camera 68. Right now, live shot Daytona Beach, Daytona Toyota, delaying Kia Cam 64. Wind is still a problem. Still plenty blustery. That will die down as the overnight wears on. Temperatures right now all in the 60s, 61 in Ocala, 56 in Gainesville, 61 in Wildwood, 64 in Kissimmee, 63 in Orlando. Now look at that wind. That's the problem. 21 mile per hour wind from Daytona Beach to New Smyrna and a 10 mile per hour wind in Orlando. Keep in mind, there's the big ridge of high pressure right now moving from Louisiana to Mississippi. In the next 24 hours, it settles up almost right on top of us. Once the high settles on top of us, the wind calms. Then by Wednesday and Thursday, we're on the backside of the ridge of high pressure and we get that wind veering around to a southerly flow and we'll warm up nicely. Upper 80s on the way for the middle and last of the week, but not tomorrow. Tomorrow we stay in the 70s still. Overnight lows tonight, pretty much in the 50s. We will call the overnight low in Orlando 58. Here is tomorrow. Sponsored by Strata Air Conditioning and Heating. AC emergency, you ought to call Strata. High tomorrow doesn't quite get to 80. We'll call it 79 in Orlando. Come look at the week ahead.
Tomorrow's high is 79, Wednesday 84, Thursday 87, Friday 86. Nothing but sunshine and a few clouds and absolutely no rain for as far as we can see. Sleep tight, neighbors. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you, Tom. Here are tonight's winning Powerball numbers again. 39, 12, 16, 52, 33, and the Powerball is won. And here are tonight's winning lottery numbers. Pick two, two, six. Pick three, four, one, zero. Pick four, seven, five, five, four. Pick five, four, four, zero, nine, eight. And the fireball is nine. And Fantasy Five, 28, 17, 4, 29, and 12. Cash for Life, we have 6, 16, 45, 49, 54, and the cash ball is two. Good luck. Trying to smile now. Ryan's here with, <laughs> with sports. Yeah, the Magic have their big <laughs> entertainment complex unveiling, but that's not for a few years. They got started early laying bricks, though. Ooh, oh, yeah. Ouch, that hurts. Hopefully the rims at True. Kia Center will be a little bit better oh on goodness. Thursday that's for Game hope. 3. Yeah, but we're talking Game 2 in Cleveland tonight where the home team flexed its muscle once again while the Magic's poor shooting doomed them yet again. Jamie Say will join us live with reaction from Cleveland on the other side. This portion of the news is sponsored by Freedom Health Medicare Advantage Plans. You have a story you want to share or a community issue you need resolved. The powerful results desk from ClickOrlando.com makes getting help simple. Just go to ClickOrlando.com and click in the corner for help. Getting results just got easier. Get to know Ginger Gadsden on News 6, weeknights at 6 p.m. All right, Ryan, I'm really looking for the Magic team that started this season. Where are they? I'm sensing some pessimism on the set out here. Uh, you're sensing a lot oh, of too. it. Not good. No, it's not good at all. I know. I'm looking for that team, too, Ginger. Second verse, same as the first. Tonight's game two of the Magic Cavaliers series, eerily similar to game one in Cleveland. And we'll be right back. Trooper Steve on Patrol is sponsored by Gibson Truck World. We are the king of trucks. All right, the Seminole High School girls water polo team honored at tonight's city commission meeting in Sanford. These girls know a thing or two about winning as well. The Lady Knowles went undefeated all season on their way to the state title. They finished 31 and 0. They hoisted the trophy this weekend after a win over West Orange High School, and that is no small feat. Congratulations to those ladies. And one of their stars, Hallie Zimlick, was a recent Sonic oh, Prep Player yeah. of the Week. Oh, my it's gosh. It's almost prophetic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the way you guys know. We feature you. You're going to go into great things. <laughs> That's the way it goes. <laughs> you heard it here first. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. You can find all of tonight's stories plus breaking news and podcasts on News 6+. Plus. It's free to download to your smart TV or streaming device. Have yourself a great Monday night.